Redemption did not remove your mind from the governing influence of the devil. He that controls your mind controls your destiny. As long as your mind is still under the control, influence of the God of this world, you will conform to the six terms of this world. The human mind is what controls the human brain cells. But the human mind is within the galaxy. It's, it's, it's controlled by the powers of the air. So the human mind is exposed to the power that controls the air. And that's what the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the mind has blinded the mind of those that have refused to accept the glorious gospel of Christ. So the blindness was of the mind, not of your optical eyes. So the God of this world is the prince of the power of the air because the powers of the air are the powers that write in the minds of men what to do. Every script, every notion, every consciousness that is written in the human mind controls the man's uh, actions, consciousness, position, and disposition. So if I can write something into the spirit aspect of your mind, suddenly it will be downloaded into your brain cells. And your brain cells will articulate it and distribute it into your actions. So Satan is the God of the mind of this world. You cannot change somebody who has been adopted and controlled in the spirit whose mind is controlled by Satan. Forget it, sons of God. You can't do that. That's why it would take another rewriting in the mindset of that man to bring transformation. Even after salvation, you are not guaranteed that you'll be saved. God gives you salvation by grace, but there's still going to be a renewal of the mind for the redemption of your mind out and from the influence of the devil. And that's why Paul says, don't be conformed to the systems of this world because this system of this world is governed. The system of this world is governed by Satan. Meaning that once, as long as your mind is still under the control, influence of the God of this world, you will conform to the systems of this world. But God says, for you to come out of the influence of the God of the mind, you would have to have a renewal, a renewal of mind. What happens when your mind is renewed? You transform. What is transformation? You are shifted, you are migrated, you, you migrate, you, you, you relocate, you are translated. Your mind is now migrating from the jurisdiction where Satan controls. To another dimension where the mind of Christ controls and that's when righteousness becomes a way of life and as long as your mind is still under the influence of a dark mind a dark Lord a dark Prince you will continue to struggle in sin yet you have eternal life in your spirit redemption did not remove your mind from the governing influence of the devil it is your communion, your participation, your yieldedness, your obedience to the Holy Ghost, your conscious effort to follow in the precepts of scriptures that will migrate a man out from the dominion of darkness within the jurisdiction of his mind. He that controls your mind controls your destiny. So that's what we have bunch of born again folks, but they are not connect, they are not connected, they are not under the governorship of Christ. What is it that has killed many? It is called acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Viruses infected COVID, you are unmasked so that you are not infected. 
you acquire it and when you acquire it you die you have come to acquire the revelation of eternal life when you are infected you live and not die when the doctor told me you will die I say if you know what I know doctor I with due respect I understand people ought to die because of the ailment but doctor doctor there is another thing that has entered my mind you don't know about it doctor it's not intellectually acquired it is not intellectually acquired it is spiritually acquired what is it that has killed many it is called acquired immune deficiency syndrome so many died out of acquired infection oh viruses infected COVID you are on mask so that you are not infected so so when you got to a place where the virus is in the atmosphere you acquire it and when you acquire it you die you have come to acquire the revelation of eternal life when you are infected you live and not die so many destinies have been altered so many futures have been destroyed because of acquired diseases it means that if it can happen to you in the natural it can also happen to you in the spiritual every time you come here you come to be infected infected with light infected with life infected with revelation the Bible says so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed during the COVID we were the only church gathering I'm talking about 2020 we are people were dying we gathered no mask on our faces and I said nobody dies in this church we never buried one single person nobody was critical nobody was rushed to the hospital we were dying in the revelation of infection of the holy ghost tell your friends it didn't come overnight five years ago we were preaching like this and you were shouting like a fool they thought you were a fool but that foolishness preserved your life Huh? They were dying like rats. We were saying immortality, death impossible, divine health, sickness impossible, divine protection, divine provision, poverty, divine direction. Mixed. When death came, a seal was put on your household, a seal of your confession. You kept confessing there was no virus anywhere. There was no infection anywhere. There was no COVID anywhere. But we were prepared ahead of time. Because everybody wakes up in the hour of darkness. Go and ask the 10 virgins that you wake up in the hour of darkness, in the hour of that great shout doesn't mean that you qualify to be victorious ah, even the foolish ones woke up are you hearing me the time is coming when everybody will wake up what i'm preaching now they will want to buy the cities overnight brother it doesn't work that way hey, they that will succeed in this hour of darkness are those that have stepped into the dimension of the prevailed remnants but to prevail the bible says the word of god grew mightily uh, so mightily grew the word not religion uh, not religion not bible knowledge no sir so mightly grew the remnant of God 
the word of God and prevailed. Tell somebody, I am dangerously infected with life. I'm changing. I'm, I'm, I'm changing. Oh. Don't, don't, don't you, don't you watch a movie? Don't you watch a movie that they call vampires? Beaten. That there is a movie called Beaten. Once you're beaten, the venom goes in, and you begin to act like what has beaten you. If the Holy Ghost has beaten you, you become a Holy Ghost. If God has, hey, we become what has beaten us. Scriptures be ye transformed. Oh, be ye met by the renewing of your mind. So if you are stagnant, it is your choice. We were never created to be stagnant. We are to change from glory to glory. The Bible says why we look as in a glass the glory of God as we behold the image of God. What are we doing? We begin to change because we are infected, beaten by the glory of God. So we change from glory to glory to glory to glory because the glory of God is eternal. The glory is infinite. The glory is glorious. The son of a lion is a lion. Jesus so prayed. Lahilo has shot the deep barada with such an intense energy that the Bible says the sweat that came out of his body was so thick like that of blood. Ephralia, 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 Rua! We're going to provoke the atmosphere to stabilize this institution called religion for the rise of the sons of God. Saesila! In this place, we will teach you spiritual warfare. And not only teach you, we will take you into the realms of warfare. Train you to ascend. Train you to ascend into the realms of God. Ascend and combat with the prince of darkness. Until these princes are held bound, there will be no revival. You may not even understand my ministry. That's why I said, let nobody trouble me for I bear the mark of the high calling. I know my assignment. I know the tearing of the spirit. The warfare is in the atmosphere. And this is the final warfare. And it's between the sons of God against the princes of darkness in the atmosphere. So the war is in the realms, not in this physical sphere. Shahila! Berida! Ruwa! My puppet is in the atmosphere. Shahila! I know my puppet. I know the dimension I'm supposed to monopolize because we are going to be taking over territories in the realms of the spirit to have maximum optimal influence in our world. Elisa, that's why my tongue is different. You think my tongue is a natural tongue, a normal spiritual tongue. No, these are tongues of dimensions where we are atmosphere begins to change. Demons in the atmosphere are dethroned and kicked out of their positions. Efata! 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 El Esahira! Efata! El Esahira! El Esahira! El Esahira! Ali Hahir, Levesh Sahima, 
Lashagirara Efahi Sahi Emio Ananeo Sahira Eko Fariara Mesa Inanio Halida Sapenta Koros Eferia Mia Enao Sahido Elevina to Sahira Sameto Totamada Katan Tontomantea Sakara Kalaba Mania 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 Power belongs to God and God is also responsible for the approved kingdom channels of God's power. God is responsible for whosoever he approves to become channels of power. Please locate men in our world who God has deposited an approval or who God has made to become channels of power. When you come around such men, become a good conductor. Let's look at Jesus, Peter, and Paul as our three examples. These three men are powerful channels of power. Now Jesus in his human form was a channel, but Christ in him was the headquarter of power. Christ was two persons in one. That's the Jesus, the human side of Christ. You, you know that. There is the Christ, the divinity of Jesus. So Jesus, that carried Christ was a channel of Christ and that's why Paul said I can do all things through Jesus no through Christ who strengthens me Jesus is the man God a God man in heaven the first custodian of Christ he carried Christ the divinity of God so as human the human side of Jesus was a channel of Christ or the power of God. And that's why Jesus was anointed because he was a human. God doesn't need to be anointed. You can anoint God. Jesus doesn't need to be anointed. David was anointed because he was man he was human getting that point Saul the first king of Israel was also anointed because he was human Paul was anointed and I tell you but the Bible says that Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost with power who went about doing good so if Jesus was anointed that means he was human he needed the anointing to be able to function with the power of God. He needed to be anointed in order to assess the power of God. Now put that scripture. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So as Jesus he was not God because God was with him. I know it's tough to say it. He was man and he was anointed and he was called the Son of God. Anointed of God, anointed with the Holy Ghost, anointed with power. And because he was anointed, he became a trusted channel of God's miraculous power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Sir, you can't do good 
You can't heal the sick. You cannot cast out devils. You cannot do the works of the Spirit without becoming a channel of God's power and the Spirit of God. So Jesus was anointed. And because he was anointed with power, what happened? The Bible says, as a channel of power, anointed of the Holy Ghost, anointed of power, the Bible says that there was a woman with the issue of blood who said to herself, if only I could touch the hem of his garment, I will be free. And what happened? The Bible recorded that the woman ran into the crowd and succeeded to touch the hem of Christ's garment. And suddenly Jesus felt electricity passing through the hem of his cloth. And that power was channeled into the body of the woman with hemorrhage for over 11 years. And immediately the blood dried up. And Jesus said, who touched me? Now here we have his exact words. For virtue has gone out of me. It means that Jesus was a channel of power. He says, for power has gone out. Something left me. And that thing was the electricity of healing. Who touched me? Who, who conducted the power that I carry? There's a power that flows through my body. Once you are approved channel of power by Zion, even though you're sleeping, it doesn't stop. Yes. It doesn't matter if I am sleeping. It doesn't matter if I'm angry. It doesn't matter if I am snoring. As long as you are a channel of power, anybody who becomes a conductor, once you can conduct, it will flow into your body. Straight away it will flow into your body. The woman touched Jesus. Jesus did not intentionally or consciously pray for her. All she did was she became a transformed conductor. She became a transformer. She went into the high tension that Jesus carried and touched it. And not just she received it, she conducted it. She received a significant portion of the electricity of Zion. It went through her. It rectified the sickness in her body. And why? she plunged into that electricity jesus felt something flowing through him and entering into somewhere so suddenly he said who touched me to him i said oh lord forgive me i i, I did he said don't worry your fate was the conductor I, your fate was the your, your receptivity your, your, you, 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 you were receptive and because of your receptivity you created your connectivity so your receptivity determines your connectivity and your honor your respect to the channels you don't come to a channel to become a friend of a channel there's only one purpose a channel is in your life so that you can become a good conductor to, so that the transmission from the channel can go straight into your systems and empower your body and rectify everything that is not of God in you so Jesus was anointed with power he became an effective effective effectual efficient channels of electrical power of the Holy Ghost Whoever that steps into the environment that Jesus was as a conductor received unhindered, uninterrupted transmission of power into his body and he got saved. Now let's put Jesus aside because somebody was about it. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. So is there any other person? Now let me show you about another one called Paul. Paul was so anointed to the point that the Bible says that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought out of his body. What happened to handkerchiefs and aprons that came out of his body? There was a transmission of power into those handkerchiefs. Now according to the scriptures, when the handkerchiefs were brought 
aprons were brought out of the body of Paul, the Bible says men and women went into the cities with those handkerchiefs, casting out devils, healing the sick. They did not pray, they used the handkerchief. Whoever they touched, demons left their bodies. Whoever they touched, the diseases left their bodies. You know why? Because current has been transmitted, has been transferred into those objects. Now put that scripture on quickly. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 12, so that from the body of Paul, we are brought onto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them what does that mean paul was a channel of power and whatsoever that came in contact with the body of paul was infected allow me to use that word infected i am highly and you are highly infectious good infection as i am right now i am a cure to every disease i don't infect you with disease then, you see, when you become a channel you, you become very contagious very infectious dangerously transmitter of the Holy Ghost fire and electricity so disease does not survive around me no, no sickness survives around me because of the electrical power of the Holy Ghost that runs through the vein of my spirit Shout amen sons of God perfect sense my name is Alice Yu. I come from Singapore. I came to know uh, Pastor John through YouTube. I, uh, I listened to the Word of God he explained. I was impressed. So I, I booked a flight to here. So um, I came here. I find uh, this church is very lively. And people here are very uh, friendly and i thank uh, pastor john uh, who he prayed for me for my problem and locate the roots of my problem i'm very grateful and i'm very thankful grateful for the man of god take time to pray for me thank you papa i highly respect you for your uh, deep revelation of the word of god and you are helpful thank you so much after the service, I was sleeping at home, then Papa visited me and he says something while I was, I don't know, is it, I think it's a vision. Then he just says something to me, he, say, he, he just came, then he was praying for me, then I started manifesting. After that, he told me that I'm not yet done with you, I'm going to finish it on Sunday. So last Sunday I came, this last Sunday, I came. Then Papa, you have to touch, you touched me. Then I manifested exactly what was happening in the dream. And today, that was awesome, especially today. Um, I, the power that was in the service, something else. It can, I can't even explain it. Even, I don't know what can I say, but I felt like, even, even now I'm still speaking, this, this something is like my shoulder. In my shoulders, it's like it's it's lighter because last Monday I've been attacked at work. Suddenly I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk. But when I remember, Papa told me when he visited me, he said, "I'm not yet done with you," and I knew that he was saying about that. And also, I want to tell you, sense about the tithing and giving seed is something that has been really helped me so much. I want to thank Papa and Mama. Mama, I thank you so much for giving away Papa. Especially today, I can't explain how I'm feeling, but I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for sending Papa in our life.